Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, five years ago, on February 15th, 2013, astronomy fans all over the world were excited. They were expecting the close approach of a small object called 2012 DA14. The small NEO had been discovered the year before, and its orbit would carry it within 30,000 kilometres of the Earth. That's inside the orbit of geostationary satellites, close enough for the object to be visible in small telescopes and easily imaged by radar systems. It was the first time that such a close approach had been predicted so long in advance. As it happened, this wouldn't be the closest approach of a space rock that day. A second unnamed object, estimated to be about 17 to 18 metres across, was headed directly at Earth. The object was not observed prior to impact. The first that the world would know would be when the residents of the Russian city of Chelyabinsk looked up and saw a th meteor 30 times brighter than the sun, leaving a thick smoke trail behind it. Of course, some of those people very quickly notified the world through social networks like Twitter. Most other people looked out of their windows at the site. After all, it was winter and cold outside, and this of course proved to be a dangerous decision, as a couple of minutes later, the shockwave from the high-altitude explosion reached the ground and shattered windows. The majority of the thousand people injured were hit by flying glass. Fortuitously, there would be no fatalities, largely because the asteroid was on such a shallow trajectory that the blast waves were generated at such a high altitude that they had dissipated much of their energy by the time they reached the ground. Had the trajectory been steeper, it would not have been the case. The Chelyabinsk meteor is possibly the most recorded meteor in history due to the prevalence of dash cams in the area. There were many drivers that just happened to be driving the right direction at the right time, and by taking multiple views from different angles, astronomers could investigate the event accurately and reconstruct the speed and direction of the progenitor object, showing that it moved westwards at a velocity of maybe 18 to 19 kilometers per second and breaking up at 30 kilometers altitude. Asteroids break up when the aerodynamic forces exceed the structural strength, and the breakup leads to an increase in surface area and, and essentially an explosive increase in the amount of energy released. The Chelyabinsk object showed several such flare-ups as it descended and shattered into small rocks, which would shower the area. And you can find fragments of this for sale, sometimes bundled with pieces of glass from those broken windows. The largest fragment recovered was over half a tonne, and it was especially notable because it impacted a frozen lake, leaving a six-metre hole in the ice. The cloud of ice and, uh, thrown up by the impact was recorded by a security camera, making it the first example of a meteorite impact recorded on camera. Unfortunately, when the 650 kilo rock was raised from the lake bed and weighed, it broke the scales, tumbled, fell, and broke into three parts. Because the object wasn't observed before entering the Earth's atmosphere, and because it was shattered into tiny pieces, scientists could only estimate the size of the object. This was done by measuring the energy released by the airbursts. Now, if it's moving at 19 kilometers per second, each kilogram of the object contains kinetic energy equal to about 45 kilograms of TNT. So by taking the energy released, you can reverse that and figure out the mass. Most of the energy from the airbursts come in the form of shock waves, and initial estimates treated it like a nuclear blast. Indeed, some of the most interesting data came from a worldwide network of pressure sensors, which is tasked with looking for rogue nuclear tests. These sensors have regularly detected airbursts from other smaller asteroids, but this is the largest one that they've recorded. The sound waves were in fact measured to pass around the world more than once. Combining all the data put the energy of the event at around 1.4 to 1.8 petajoules, roughly equivalent to a 500 kiloton nuclear weapon, and allowing scientists to estimate the mass of the object at about 12,000 tonnes. The meteorites recovered show that it was a rocky body with a density of about 3.6 grams per cubic centimetre, putting the diameter at about 17 metres. Now, if you subtract out the effect of Earth's gravity and then project the asteroid's orbit back, it showed that the Chelyabinsk progenitor approached from inside the Earth's orbit at about 14 kilometers per second. Had it approached from another direction, 
It would have likely been discovered prior to impact, but in its last few days, it was too close to the sun to be observed by any telescopes. It's worth pointing out, incidentally, that the encounter orbit was completely different from that of 2012 DA14, and that the objects could not be related to each other, despite these close encounters happening within a day of each other. Extrapolating the orbit even further back suggested that this progenitor had an orbit which travelled between the asteroid belt and the inner solar system, and that it had passed through perihelion maybe about 40 days prior to impacting the Earth. Given the eccentric orbit, many scientists suggest that the orbit may have been uh, a main belt asteroid which fell into a mean motion resonance with Jupiter and had its eccentricity pumped up until the asteroid had started crossing the Earth's orbit. It had probably been orbiting near the Earth for millennia, but it was too small to be noticed until the day it hit us. Analysis of the meteorites also showed large showed minerals which suggested that it had been part of a, a larger body at some point and had been shattered into fragments probably millions of years ago. The events that led to Chelyabinsk may have started far in the distant past, but coming back to the moment of the event, I do have one interesting data point that hasn't appeared in many documentaries. On the day it happened, I was developing tools to analyse social media, and those tools actually showed me that the first people to see the object tweeted very, very quickly. And they were all shouting about the meteorite in the sky. But about two minutes later, people started talking about an explosion. And the two minute difference I've taken to be the time that it took for the shockwave to reach the ground. So you had one group of people outside that saw it and they started talking about a meteor and the, the second group were inside and they were only alerted when they heard the blast. And so that's why there's a two minute difference. You can almost measure the speed of sound by this distant uh, difference in Twitter. Anyway, the truth is that while there are a number of people working with great equipment to look for other near-Earth asteroids, the vast majority of them are still unknown. And it's still likely that the first thing many people will know about an impact or hitting us is when someone near the events posts it to social media. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.